Welcome back to Hot Rod Guy Garage, and this is going to be another episode of fixing this hacked up 65 Mustang. So follow me along through the intro, and I'll be back. all right guys yeah it's a uh, wednesday of the next week since got these floor pans put in here so what we need to do today is patch these rear floor pans now in reality it probably could have used a whole rear floor pan under the seat uh, but it's only got about three or four small spots and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go in there and i'm gonna cut little patch panels and we're gonna patch these little holes up for him to just try to save him some money. So, let's get started. So guys, this is gonna be the first little patch we're gonna focus on. Now I went in here and cut out the bad metal. Uh, I cleaned this as well as I could, just spray some weld through primer on it. Uh, but basically what we're gonna do, this is not gonna be a straight patch. And there's no way to mark it from the other side. So what I like to do, I'm going to come in here with my paint marker. And I'm just going to kind of roughly mark this here. And seeing how I cut this, it runs downhill. I'm going to kind of come in here and replicate the same thing. And I'm just going to start a little big. You're going to cut it down as needed. So, I'm going to go over here to my bandsaw, and I'm going to cut this little, uh, not so much square out, and see if we can't get this place patched. So, I got my first cut done, and our angle's pretty good down here at the bottom. Let's need to trim a little bit off up here at the top, and then we can get it to fit. So... We got our little patch weld through primer on the back side and final trimmed here. Uh, ideally, what I'm wanting it to do is when I lightly tap this panel right here to the side, I want it to literally have a friction fit into this hole. And that's what I have. I can't pull this panel out. So that's how you properly cut a patch to patch a small rust hole. Uh, obviously, I'm going to go in here and weld this stuff up. Kind of my overcut here, overcut here. And I'll come in here and I'll fully weld this in. And we'll be leaps and bounds ahead. A couple of you may notice there's some pinholes right here. I'm also going to cut another patch out to go in here and address that. Uh, when you don't have the option to replace the whole panel, doing small patches like this are a very viable option. Uh, like I said before, this could probably use this whole under seat pan, but never try to take it, save him some money and get him some use out of this car. We're just going to go in here and patch this because it takes less, less labor time than to put this whole pan in. And there's nothing wrong with trying to help somebody out. In this situation, he's so deep in this car, guys, that this is a viable option for this area. Uh, it will last him the rest of his life and probably most of his grandchildren's. So I'm going to get this panel welded in here, and I'll be back.
And just like it, guys, we no longer have our rust hole. We have a good solid repair. So what I'm going to do, I'm coming here with flat disc. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to hit this a little bit over here, see how big we need to make this patch. And we'll go from there. So this is what we ended up with, with initial grinding. Um, I can come back in here with a smaller grinder and actually smooth this on out. But really, it's in pretty good to go condition there. Here, we got some metal degradation over here. But it's still good and solid. Anytime you can't knock through this metal with a pointed body hammer, it's pretty solid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out a little small square here. I'm going to put a little small patch in right here. And this side of the floor will pretty much be done. All right. I changed my plan here. I come in here and just spot weld these holes up. Because these holes are from the inside out, not from the outside in. I could see exactly how large they were. So I turned my welder down. I just come in here and buzz these holes up. It'll actually make it look nicer on the bottom because you can't see this area right here. But got all our little pinholes. There was a couple more than I anticipated. I come in here and put a little more welding here. So I come in here and grind this down. So, pretty good progress so far. So while not exactly my preferred method of repair, it will work just fine for this application. So let's move on to the driver's side and see what we can get into over here. All right, and I got our driver's side floor vacuumed out so we can actually see in here. So I come up here, and this is a real common rust place under factory seam sealer. And I don't see anything. I still got a little more to remove. We got to fix this uh, seat mount. Well, the brace for the rear seat back. Uh, where they cut it loose for some reason, didn't attach it. I think they were going to try to put an inner wheelhouse in it, which luckily they didn't because this one can be patched right here. Uh, we get a little ugly in this corner down here. We get a little small hole through. Uh, I'm going to come in here and wire brush this again. And I'll probably just build this up with weld in here. I weld it to this rocker. Uh, we got a patch we got to put right here. We got some more of them from the inside to the outside pinholes right here. And that's pretty much it in the rear floor. So we got two patches to make, some welding to do over here, and some welding to do over here, and some fixing to do up there. And a lot of you are probably saying, why are you just going to weld that place in the corner? Uh, it's a triple wall panel right there. Um, I've ground on it some already, and it was cleaned metal on the top. I wire brushed on the inside until it was shiny and sprayed some weld through primer on it. It looks pretty okay. It's still getting solid when you tap on it with pointed end to the hammer. So I can literally build this up with weld and grind it down and it will be just fine. Uh, as for the holes, they got to be patched. Uh, the wheel well will be the hardest one uh, because it's going to be an inside and outside grinding job. Uh, the one over the subframe is not such a big deal. And the pinholes, like I did on the other side, I'm just going to weld them up. So let's get started. So you're probably wondering, how do you determine the size of the patch? So the way I do it, I go in here with my pointed body hammer. And I tap around the edges here. And you can tell where it's soft. I know the camera's probably bouncing. But you can tell where this metal's soft, like right here. That metal's not soft right there on that edge. That metal's not soft right there. That metal's not soft there. It's not soft there. But it is soft right here. And you see some crusty stuff coming out from the suffering. So basically, the way I'm going to do this, I just come in here and I try to make somewhat straight lines. So I'm going to cut down to this edge. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come down through here. Just like this. And I'm going to bring this panel all the way to this edge. Right here. Because it's soft here. And we need to clean this area as much as we can in here. 
So this is going to require me to get the little air cutoff wheel because this is a real tight area and I can't get that big uh, cutoff wheel in here with this big jump up right here. So let me get to cutting this out and I'll be back. You know, I was going along and marking this hole to cut this out to make a panel fit flush in here. Well, what about you guys that don't have the metal working capabilities but still want to fix a hole in your floor and you're not really concerned about longevity? So, I'm mocked up something here. I'm just going to show you. This is the panel that I am going to use to patch the floor, but I still haven't cut it out yet. I thought this might be a good time to pop in here and show you some of you guys this. This is going to be an alternate method to patching this floor. This is not how I'm going to do it, but you can do it, but it will not last as long. So, so you don't have the capabilities to cut something out. Uh, and your metalworking skills are kind of basic. So, let's say you got some holes you want to fix like this. They're going to come in here with something like this and grind all that back to solid metal. Once again, you don't want, you don't want soft metal around the edge. You're going to come in here and clean your brace up as best you can till you see shiny metal, whether that's with a wire brush or a grinder or some kind of grinding way, wheel. Uh, you want to cut a panel that closely fits what you're trying to patch. Now, this isn't going to be precise. This is just what I started with with a patch because I was going to go in here and mark the edge where I could fit it up. But say you don't have the capability to make a panel fit 100% correctly and you just want to fix a hole in your floor or, you know, something like that where it really don't matter how it looks and you're just wanting to fix a hole. You can do an overlapping patch like this as long as you remove all the bad metal around. Uh, well through primer in this situation would be a must on both sides of your panel. I sprayed the back of this just for giggles to show you all this. But basically guys, you could take a panel like this and go in here and weld this over your hole if you wished. Doing something like this wouldn't affect somebody removing this panel in the future because you're not going in here and hacking up a uh, edge or anything. Uh, as far as just a car that, you know, you were just going to drive or if we're in rust belt state and you just need to fix some holes in your floor, this could be an acceptable method. Just make sure you remove all your corrosion below. And obviously you want to cut this panel down so you don't have like a huge overlap like this is, but you want to end up with just a little small overlap. The smaller the better because it gives less chance for rust getting between these two panels. But that is an alternate method you can use to fix something like this. This figured it'd be a little helpful advice for somebody that may not have the means to flush fit a panel in like a patch panel like this. So at this point I'm going to go in here and I'm going to trim my floor some more. I'm going to trim this panel some more where I can get a flush fit because that's what I do. But it is an alternate method that you could venture down that road, but do not do something like this and tell somebody the car is solid or that it is fixed correctly, or you end up like this car was in the beginning. So guys, got that welded up. It's going to be ground down right there. Got our pinholes up here welded up. They need to be ground down. And then I turn the heat up on my welder and address this spot over here. Well, I kind of got in a hurry and forgot to film me 
patching this piece, but I ended up just cutting this out in here and cut a little square piece with a flange, welding it around the rocker seam and around the edges. A uh, little more grinding cleanup work needs to be done on some of this stuff, but I'm just trying to get all my patches in and then we can go back and do a final grinding. Uh, big thing is I gotta get that little patch in up there. So I totally forgot to film that. Uh, Pretty much the same process been going through, cutting it out, fitting the panel, little tap, 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 flush mount, grind, you know, it's done. So I got to move on to this wheel well patch, well, inner wheelhouse patch. Uh, I'm going to take this rear wheel off where I got better access for both sides. And I will probably cut this one from the wheel well side uh, because it will be easier for me to fit instead of climbing around inside the car. Well, it's a little while later and I'm in here in the wheel well. I got the wheel off the car. So let me flip the camera around and I'll show you exactly where I'm at. And it's time to mark for this other patch pile. So since I'm going to replace this outer wheelhouse because of this rusty stuff that was you can see around the bottom, I went ahead and cut it out so I could access this panel in here. Because you have a four-way section right here where everything's overlapped. And... Your outer wheelhouse attaches this rocker panel. I'll show that to y'all. That's what it looked like up in here and on the back side of where we need to patch. So I went in here and blew the rocker panel out. It looks pretty okay up in there. We got a little crusty right here, but it's good and solid. Um, flashlight. But... This uh, inner rocker looks pretty okay in there. Probably get done with this car, get all these things blown out, we'll spray some frame coating up in there. But like I told you before, to patch this area, I'm coming here and I tap around and find solid metal. So basically what's going to end up happening, I'm going to come in here something like this and down like this. Obviously, I'll wire brush and grind all this stuff off and weld through primer. But that's how we're going to start out over here. So, I'm going to come up a little higher than what I was saying. And I'm going to come down in good clean metal, something like that. So, I'm going to come in here with my grinder and we'll cut this out. And I'll be back when I get it cut out. And at this point, we're trimmed out. And I come in here and I wire brush this stuff about the best you can. So spray a little weld through primer on this. Maybe hit it with grinder first. But that's uh, how a small hole turns into a big hole. Yeah, I come in here with my flat disc and this stuff ended up looking a bunch better. So I coated everything well through primer. I sprayed on some of this rusty stuff up in there too. But I'm gonna let this stuff cure out. And while I do that, I'm gonna have me a piece of metal and start forming it to this angle. So hopefully y'all can see this. What I done, I just roughly eyeballed a piece of metal out and kind of roughly eyeballed the angle out. It's gonna take a little more dolly and hammer work but at this point, I can start trimming this a little bit better where it fits the hole. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to slightly hold it up above my cut line there because we're going to have to kind of come down here like this. And we need to come over in here a little bit and trim this. And that'll give me a rough cut on this panel and I can go over here and work it with dolly some more until it fits and all right I think I've got our panel close to fitting here so I'm gonna hit the dolly it while it's in the car and as I weld but I can first start with this edge right here and this up to this bend right here and that'll allow me to hand form it I also went ahead and drilled plug weld holes for here so let's get busy.
once you get it tacked, you should be able to push it around like this. You may have to get a little downward tap like that to get it flush. But I'm just going to go in here and tap around until I get everything. To fit up the way I want it to. of you probably screaming you're getting the metal too hot it's not gonna work not a little small piece like this and it really don't matter in this application So, our patch is in. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. So, what's this side look like? Looks like a properly penetrated weld. Uh, of course, I got a little pinhole over in the corner. And I'll address that from the inside in here. And I will probably come in here, because I didn't drill these plug weld holes here for floor pan. I'll probably just come in here and weld this solid across. And after a little grinding, you won't ever see it. And this is what our patch looks like after clean up. This is this very minor little dips and welds here. Uh, as you can see, I went in here and welded around that edge. You see the welds penetrated through here. Dotted little spot there. We still get a little little light through, coming through right here, but shouldn't be a big deal. But on the inside, guys, this is why I do flush mounted panels and you want to get it to be butt welded because the panel pretty much just disappears uh, especially well once we get a little paint on it but other than a little pinhole through right there and I might come back in here and dot that up again uh, looks pretty good so I'm sure some of you probably don't like that I'm patching these little small spots but it turned into a budget deal not really a budget deal for him, but it saves him money, me patching the rear floor, that put the whole rear floor in it. Uh, they kind of save a little face on, you know, this uh, financial uh, atrocity here. You know, I agreed that we just patch them little small spots. Uh, I've got maybe about three and a half hours in it at this point. So at this point, I'm ready to spread a little uh, paint over that patch, let it dry. I'm going to come in here and seam seal the front half of the floors. I will get them sealed up and painted. That's POR 15. And then when we pick up again, we'll be on the rear half. So let me see what else we can get done today, and we'll go from there. And I went in here and just sprayed a little enamel over these patches. And I did come in here, and I plug welded this seat brace back in. And I went ahead and welded along the outside edge. Uh, done the same thing over there. 
Uh, the reason why I paint around all these edges where I removed the factory seam sealer and wire brushed is you never want to put seam sealer over bare metal or it will rust in between. So at this point, I'm ready to wipe this floor down. I've done vacuum dump, blew it out again. I'm ready to take some thinner and wipe everything down. Then I can come in here and seam seal my edges. Uh, the important thing to seam seal are overlapping panels like this because you do not want water to get in between here on either side. Uh, same where we put our patches back here in the back floor and back here in the wheel well. We want to seam seal around this stuff too just to make sure we don't have any water intrusion in between our welds and our panels. So, don't look like a whole lot now, but once it's seam sealed and painted, it'll look a hundred times better in here and look just about like a brand new car. So, a lot of work to do. So, a bunch of steps to do this stuff where it will last a long time. But, once you do it right, you're not gonna have to go back in here like I had to do on this car and cut everything back out and start over. Um, like I said, those patches will last a good long time, probably his lifespan, if not longer. So the important thing is, is just get everything sealed up, everything welded together, and make sure we don't have no cracks or gaps, and get those all sealed up and get everything painted. Well, it's several hours later, and I'm going in here and seam sealing where I removed factory seam sealer, like around these seat mounts. I chipped out all that old tar sealer around them, replaced it with modern seam sealer. Uh, same with all these panels that I put in. I seam sealed around them and where I weld the pinholes and stuff up. So I got some tips on how to do this. Uh, it looks like there's quite a bit on here, but there's really, really not. So what I do, I'll run a bead along my weld seam, and then I go in here with a cutoff paintbrush and just smooth it out. Uh, the seam sealer is just an extra level of corrosion resistance and make sure if there is any pinholes that nothing penetrates through it. Now, it looks ugly right now, but once this is painted, you won't ever see it. It will appear to be factory. So, I'm going to bring you along. I'm going to show you what I do with the brush. And we'll go from there. But basically, guys, me putting it over this seam is just a little extra. But where you go in here and you get all these butt weld seams, uh, it's real helpful. So... I'm just going to kind of show you here, like on this seam right here. I just put a little, little bead like that. And like I said, some of this is just kind of overkill here. But just to make it easy for the camera, what I'm doing, I'm just going here with a short brush and just. Brush it over the seam. So, unless you got in here and softened your paint up with a little thinner, you won't have that happen. But basically, that's what I'm going through here and done. With my mega crappy caulking gun here. Just going to go through here cover all these seams that way I can come in here in the morning and paint this floor and we can officially be done with the front half of this car why even seem silly at all well most because he's gonna drive this car and more than likely it's gonna leak water inside so the more I can do to prevent water from penetrating anywhere we put panels in or anywhere it's been repaired, the better off we are. So while it looks ugly now, when I come in here and I paint this floor, 90% of the ugly is going to disappear. Uh, it may look a little excessive, but like I said before, it's not thin. I'm spreading it out with that paintbrush, just pretty much covering my seams. So. A lot of the factory seam sealer that I removed, I replaced with the modern seam sealer. So, might get another 40 or 50 years out of it, I don't know. 
So I'll flip it around. I'll show you where I'm at. I'm not going to be able to do nothing the rest of the day. It's already 5 o'clock at this point. Uh, I'll come in here in the morning. We'll paint this floor. And I'll show you what it looks like then. So basically anywhere there was a weld seam to the outside or a plug weld seam, I come in here and seam sealed all the way around, including the seat base. Uh, like I said, where we put our panels in, I bought the little seam sealer over them and around where I welded up over there. And all this is factory seam sealer that I replaced, especially around these rear seat mounts. Uh, well, it may look like this floor is rusty, most of that's red oxide primer and factory paint, which after I wiped it down with thinner, the factory gold really comes through. So this stuff's going to dry. It says within 30 minutes it's paintable, but I'm going to let it dry overnight and then I'll come back in here. So here's one of those cases where it looks bad before it looks better again. Um, some people may have different opinions on the seam sealer. That's how I personally do it. Um, like I said, kind of looks ugly right now, but once it's painted, it'll be fine. I'll repeat this process around the seams on the bottom and paint it. And this car is going to get undercoated. So literally every weld seam under this car is going to disappear, guys. So there's still a bunch of work to do. I just wanted to get the front half of the floor painted. That way I could call it good. And that way he has some kind of visual hope that things are getting better because it's ugly to see this stuff in this state of disassembly. So I'll see you tomorrow and we'll see where we get. Well, it's the next day and our seam sealer is all cured out. And I'm going to show you the reason why it looked like I was globbing this stuff on. And I really wasn't because the seam sealer does shrink slightly. This is probably one of the thicker areas that I showed you yesterday. If you look at it, you can actually see the seam again. And it's shrunk back. And our seam sealer is all cured. So, at this point, we're ready to paint. So, I stopped this morning. Got a quart of uh, gloss black rust-oleum. And that's what we're going to paint this floor with. Rust-oleum? Yeah, that's uh, one of the best, longest lasting waterproof paints that you can put in the floor of a old car. Uh, I've done it for years. Uh, I've never had no problems with it peeling, falling off, scratching. Anytime I've ever pulled the carpet out of an old car that I've done that cut, it's looks like brand new underneath. So to keep with tradition to saving him a little bit of money, that's what we're going to use on the floor of this car. So let's get the painting. So guys, this right here is exactly what I'm going to be using. Uh, this slow cure stuff dries really hard. And I'm just going to use a two inch chip brush here to, you know, brush this paint on. And I'm only going to go back to right here. Because I still have metal work to do back there. But I'll be able to tape this off in here and block this section off. So, basically what you're going to do, I just dip my brush in the paint, like this right here, and I'm just going to start applying it like this. Um, over, as this cures, it will level out and all these brush marks will be gone. So, follow along with me and we'll get this painted. And this is what we look like at the halfway point. So, time to get this set uh, done. Still got about a half quart left. Uh, you may notice I stopped right there. I'll come back in there later and paint that with the wind regulator and stuff out of it. But so far, it's looking pretty good.
Well, it's been about an hour since I brushed this paint on. I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you what it looks like after it levels out. Uh, looks a ton better. So hopefully somebody will take something from this video and it'll help them out in the future. So guys, got all this stuff painted. As you can see, 90% of our brush marks have leveled out. So I'm going to let this dry for a couple days. And then we'll come in here and we'll start on the trunk. That'll be our next video. And we'll probably start on these wheelhouses and the trunk floor. And clean these subframes and all this mess up back here. So guys, that's pretty much a wrap on the 65 Mustang for this week. I wanted to put out a video to maybe help some of y'all out in your own projects. Or maybe you're just keeping up with this one. So the big thing is, you got to let that paint dry a few days. That way I can go in here and we can start on the trunk. So stay tuned for that one. And I appreciate everybody that watches. So if you do like these videos, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends. And most importantly, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button because it does help the channel to grow. And this will be it for the 65 Mustang until our next video. See you then.